Good afternoon everyone, my name is Joshua and this is Chloe and Wampo. We were all once fellow NUS students just like yourselves, and all three of us are from Silver Linings, an organisation that is focused on aiding the elderly and that has identified the nefarious problem of ageism in our elder community. First, let's take a look at a short video that we have prepared regarding this problem. Hi, my name is Joseph. I'm 53 and I lost my job twice in the last decade. I was recently fired because they replaced me with a fresh graduate instead. Guess I'm getting old now. I've taken on jobs that have paid me as little as $5 per hour. I've been looking for a new job for the past 6 months and no one wants to hire me and I'm worried about my future, my kids and my family. Hi, I'm here for the interview for the technician position. Yeah, sure, take a seat. So Joseph, tell me more about yourself. I was working in the industrial air compressor industry for 17 years. Joseph is qualified, but he's in a more senior rank. So we're worried that he won't stay in the company for long. So we decided to hire someone younger instead. Also, we're worried that he's out of touch with some of the state-of-the-art technology that we offer here at Fengseng Technologies. Uh, excuse me, yeah. this one, how to use? <sighs> Just press this. Oh, thank you, thank you. Wow, like, you're a bit slow, eh, honestly. Like, crypto also don't know how to use it. I don't know, man. More like that one. <sighs> Even though I finally found a job, to continue working hard to prove myself. If not, I'm not sure how much longer they will let me stay. Hope you all enjoyed the little skit that we put together. And while there were some elements that were greatly exaggerated, of course, this is in fact a very real problem that many elderly people face here in Singapore, and that is the insidious problem of ageism. This skit is actually based on the real life story of Mr. Joseph Yap, who had to navigate a tangled web of discriminatory employment practices, haughty attitudes from his employers, and condescending remarks from his fellow co-workers. Um, now, can I just have a show of hands? Okay, I don't think that's possible, so can I see your replies in the chat below? Uh, how many of you have parents that are over the age of 50? Okay, I see that's quite a number. Me too. Did you know that they are the exact same age group that is most at risk of getting retrenched here in Singapore, a staring 40% of the sampled populace? As seen in this video, these older workers are perceived as slow and incompetent, and where they are seen as a liability and are more likely to get fired first. This has contributed substantially to the increasing poverty rate among the working elderly, which hit 41% in 2011. Many are forced to work odd jobs and the like, in spite of the relevant skill sets that they may have, working long hours and physically demanding jobs for their age. In the end, many are unable to support themselves financially, which can lead to adverse emotional effects such as depression and anxiety. These desolate sentiments can also be reinforced by the attitudes of people around them. Discriminatory comments such as, Oh, people actually always raise slow, ah, when repeated often enough, tend to be internalized by the individual, even the elderly people themselves who will come to believe this. This can affect their morale and self confidence extensively. Age is portrayed in a negative light, a mindset that some of us may knowingly or unknowingly possess, and this is something we hope to change. Toby will now speak more on this. The common narrative of more mature individuals in our society is often framed with negative descriptors such as vulnerable, slow, inflexible, or less productive. While of course, as we age, we may become more physically inept, to completely define someone by these characteristics is extremely unfair. These older individuals that we see every day have so much to contribute, and just like blue cheese or fine wine, some things even get better with age. In the workplace, Older workers have a wealth of experience under their belts, allowing them to have more soft skills, like being wiser, better decision makers, or also more self-confident. They can also serve in mentorship roles and tend to be more reliable during crisis management compared to their, their younger counterparts. And drawing back to the article of Joseph Yap, 
It was these qualities that eventually convinced his employer to give him a chance at employment, despite his more mature age. Outside work, many older citizens also choose to contribute back to society by volunteering. As we see in this article in the Straits Times, around 19% of the elderly in Singapore regularly do volunteer work. Next, I'll also like to share a story of my time volunteering at an elder's home, where I met this 75-year-old man named Mr. Tan. He shared with me that in his free time, he fixes wheelchairs with recycled materials and then redistributes them to other elderly citizens in Singapore. And personally, I was really impacted by his story, as even at this age, where most would assume that he would be happily in retirement, he still actively tries to improve the lives of those around him. And the thing is, this isn't a unique case. I'm sure many of you, in your own lives, have also met other older individuals who continue to inspire and touch the lives of those around them. This could be even be your own parents, or even our late Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, who continued to serve his time until he passed on at age 91. So all these heartfelt stories have truly showed me that age is just a number and should not define how much one can achieve because anyone can make significant contributions at any point in their lives. And with Singapore currently facing an aging population, it is even more important now than ever to find the silver lining and not see the elderly as a burden or societal problem to be managed, but a game-changing opportunity to harness their full potential. To eliminate ageism, our group has come up with the acronym ABC that we can all keep in mind when interacting with other older individuals. Firstly, A stands for accept. So we should embrace the beauty of maturing and all the limitations that come with it. Because at the end of the day, aging is just a life process and we should all learn to age gracefully. Secondly, B stands for bloom. So this means that we empower them with um, tools to blossom in their golden years and encourage them to continue growing and encourage lifelong learning as well. So be in the workplace or outside, we, as future colleagues and citizens of this country, should not hinder them through acts of discrimination, but be patient with them and guide them where necessary. And this also goes alongside humbling ourselves to realise that they are valuable and we have a lot to learn from them as well. And lastly, C stands for chance. So not only do we accept them and allow them to bloom, but we also give them the chance to shine and contribute in their own ways. So more significantly, in the workplace, when some of you become future employers as well, you should continue to provide these older workers with work opportunities and value them based on their own merit and not simply their age. So this ABC framework should be a mindset that we all adopt when interacting with more mature individuals, be it the auntie or the uncle that you see every day, or your fellow colleagues in your future workplace. And one way this ABC framework can be facilitated would be through our self-initiated project, Project Bloomer, which Wompo will tell you more about later. Now, I'd like to prompt the audience to imagine a world where the ABC framework is actualized. A world where there are no microaggressions amongst the younger and older generation because we accept. Now, imagine a happy and diverse workplace. A workplace where people stop making assumptions of their older counterparts because we all bloom at different points of our life. A world where people will stop making memes or jokes against older people, but instead, give them a chance to shine in their own way. We are truly a blessed bunch of people, but do you guys know why? We live in an era where opinion leaders are no longer confined to celebrities or politicians. With the help of mass media, we can be the voice for the elderly in our society and make concrete positive changes for those who have done so much for us already. Madonna once said, We've made so many advances in other areas, civil rights, gay rights, but ageism remains a taboo. As such, here is where we should all play a part in countering ageism. In order to materialize the ABC framework, I present to you Project Bloomer. Project Bloomer is facilitated through the use of different social media platforms by using the hashtag Bloomer. The word Bloomer is defined as a person who matures or flourishes at a certain time. The project emphasizes on how we can continue to bloom at different stages of our lives. This is also our attempt to counter the current usage of the negative phrase OK Boomer. We encourage everyone to share their inspiring stories of your own grandparents or the older folks around you that has inspired you in one way or another. We will also be reposting the, the stories to our official Instagram page as well. Your post could even be of your lovely security aunties that keeps you safe 
or the coffee shop uncle that makes your cup of coffee every morning. Now, let me kick off the project by sharing a personal example from my Instagram page. This is my grandmother. She is 80 years old this year. I don't know if you'll believe this, but she's actually still works at a clinic as a pediatrician. She always shares with me how heartwarming it is when some of her patients grow up and bring their own children to visit her. Her passion for children and the healthcare industry is admirable, and she's truly my biggest inspiration and hero, and this post is dedicated to her. Hashtag Bloomer. We believe that if all, of our, if all of us share a story of our own grandparents or the everyday heroes around us, and if you tag your friends to do it as well, we can change the mindset of the people in our society, slowly but surely. Minimizing ageism can be as easy as A, B, C. And in the near future, we should all be able to grow old in a safe and non-judgmental environment. After all, ageism hits the closest to home. And a promise to end such discrimination is a promise to ourselves in the future. On a final note, I'd like to remind everyone to collect your set of stationery kit that we have prepared. The design aims to echo the key points that we have recorded in the speech. It is also to remind each and every one of us that, that as we go into the workplace, we should remember our ABCs. And know that many of the elderly around us continue to bloom even in their older years. If all of us learn to appreciate and show some love to the elderly around us, I believe we can end ageism together. Last but not least, on behalf of the team, I'd like to thank everyone for your time and attention, and we wish you all the best in your future endeavours.